Hello, my name is David Pierboom. I am from the Cleveland Clinic Brain Tumor and Neuro-Oncology Center, and I'd like to talk to you about chemotherapy for brain tumors. We'll talk about chemotherapy first. What is it, and what makes it work or not work? Side effects, what are they, and how can we manage them? and options, standard treatment or clinical trial. I always like to start with my take home messages. First, that conventional and targeted chemotherapies are both important in the treatment of brain tumors. Most chemotherapy side effects are reversible or can be managed. And clinical trials offer new treatments that will hopefully improve the state of the art. Chemotherapy, what is it? How does it work? How do we get chemotherapy to the tumor? What are the routes of administration? There's oral, intravenous, or IV, intra-arterial, or IA, convection-enhanced delivery, or CED, and finally, wafers, and we'll talk about these. There are other issues that we'll discuss, including drug resistance, tumor issues, and for patients with brain metastases, the status of their systemic disease. Chemotherapy simply means drugs to treat cancer. Chemo meaning chemical, therapy meaning treatment. There are two broad classes of chemotherapy that we usually talk about, traditional and targeted. First to talk about traditional or conventional chemotherapy. These drugs work by directly killing cancer cells and they do this in several different ways. They can cause breaks in the DNA which DNA governs how cells behave, how they grow. Chemotherapy can block the production of certain proteins that are important in the life of a cell. Chemotherapy can block the division of cells or it can block the formation of new blood vessels. This is called anti-angiogenic. Chemotherapy in general kills the fast-growing cells, most cancer cells being fast-growing, and it kills these cells more then it kills slow-growing cells. So that's traditional or conventional chemotherapy. Targeted chemotherapy, on the other hand, attacks a particular target on the cancer cell. Oftentimes, this is what's called a receptor. A receptor is a protein on the surface of a cancer cell that signals that cell to grow. There are many other targets in the cancer cells that can be exploited. There are proteins that help new blood vessels grow. There are also proteins inside the cell that cause the cancer cell to grow, to proliferate, and to invade the local area. How do we get drug to a brain tumor? This diagram shows that if we start with a certain drug, either given by mouth or by vein or IV, that drug first has to pass through the liver. The liver is the main organ in the body that metabolizes or breaks down chemotherapy drugs. This process of metabolism can be increased by other medications that a patient may take. Once that metabolism is done, there's a certain amount of drug that's left over. That drug then has to pass through what's called the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier exists to protect our brains from most poisons. Once the drug has passed through the blood-brain barrier, there's a certain amount that's left over that actually works on the brain tumor. There are several different routes by which a chemotherapy drug could be administered. Oral, an example of which is temozolomide, intravenous or IV, examples of which are bevacizumab or arenatecan, there is intra-arterial chemotherapy in which the drug is actually given into the arteries that lead directly into the brain. Examples of these drugs are carboplatin and methotrexate. And finally, there's local delivery. Two ways in which that's done are convection-enhanced delivery in which a tiny tube is actually put right into the tumor and drug is slowly pumped through that tube and the use of BCNU wafers. BCNU is a drug that is actually placed into these small wafers and the surgeon actually places these wafers 
into the surgical cavity at the time that a brain tumor is removed. There are other issues that can affect how well a drug works. Drug resistance is probably the most important. Many tumors are or become resistant to chemotherapy. That is, the chemotherapy either doesn't work up front or it stops working after a period of time. There are factors in the tumor that are very important. For example, there are mutations in the tumor that can affect how well a chemotherapy works. For patients who have brain metastases, that is cancer that has spread to the brain from elsewhere, the status of the cancer outside the brain has a big impact on how well a patient will respond to that treatment. Side effects can occur depending on a number of different factors. The drug or drugs that are used are very important. There are interactions with other drugs that a patient may be on that can affect the severity and the incidence of side effects. The patient, of course, is very important in determining side effects. So a patient that has several other medical problems is more likely to have side effects than a patient who has no other medical problems. The function of the kidneys and the liver is also very important in thinking about side effects. And finally, the amount of previous chemotherapy is very important as well. A patient who has had lots of chemotherapy in the past is more likely to have side effects than a patient who has never received chemotherapy. It's important to know that most chemotherapy side effects are reversible and most side effects can be helped. I want to talk about uh, some of the side effects that occur with chemotherapy. There are constitutional symptoms such as fevers, chills, and fatigue. Uh, fatigue is a common side effect both of chemotherapy uh, but also is a common side effect of having cancer. Bone marrow suppression can occur. Uh, bone marrow is where the blood cells are made and white blood cells and platelets can drop but in the vast majority of cases those blood counts will come back up. Neurologic side effects can occur. There is a mental sluggishness that is called chemo brain. Uh, depression can occur as a result of chemotherapy. There are also taste changes, loss of appetite, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation can occur. We have uh, several good medicines that can help these or prevent these. Dermatologic side effects can occur, dry skin, rash, and an entity called hand-foot syndrome in which there's redness of the palms and soles. Uh, rarely bleeding can occur, and this can happen in the intestines, the lungs, or even in some cases, the brain. How can we manage the side effects? Uh, the important point to remember is that there are many things that can be done to manage side effects. There are medications that can help prevent side effects. Certainly anti-nausea medicines can prevent nausea. There are other measures that don't involve medicines that can be taken. For instance, staying well hydrated and staying active is important in the management of constipation. It's important to talk to your nurse or physician about these side effects. And if fever or bleeding occur, it's important to call your doctor or nurse promptly. Let's talk about treatment options. Clinical trials, it's important to know that the patient is not a guinea pig. Clinical trials are an effort to develop a new treatment that will hopefully be better than our existing treatment. Clinical trials can involve traditional drugs, they can involve alternative drugs, combinations of drugs, uh, variations on surgery or radiation therapy, and finally, new devices. When we talk about making a treatment better, what we mean is a treatment that will allow a longer life, that will improve the quality of life, that will delay the growth of the tumor, or that will shrink a tumor. We hope to achieve all of these things with our new treatments. Clinical trials occur in different phases. A phase one trial involves a new drug 
or a new combination of existing drugs or even a new device. Uh, these are generally treatments that have not been tried in patients before, but have a background of success in the laboratory and in animal studies. One example of such a device or such a trial is the autolit laser treatment for recurrent glioblastomas being tested at the Cleveland Clinic. Phase two trials test the effectiveness of a new treatment once the phase one trial has been performed. An example is the new drug EM1421 for patients with recurrent high-grade gliomas. Phase three studies test a new treatment against the existing standard of care. One of the studies at the Cleveland Clinic involves a device called the Novo TTF100A compared with best standard of care. Every clinical trial has criteria for eligibility. These criteria ensure that patients remain safe and that at the end of the study, the data is useful. For patient safety, it's important that certain lab tests verify that the kidney, liver, and bone marrow are working properly. In terms of the data, it's important that the patient population be uniform for instance, some trials are restricted to patients with newly diagnosed tumors. Others will enroll only patients with a specific tumor type, and still others will restrict the number of prior treatments allowed before entry onto the study. Why participate in a clinical trial? We hope that clinical trials will offer a better treatment than what we currently offer. Clinical trials do expand the number of treatment options available to a patient. In this regard, the sequence of treatments matter. Many clinical trials will allow only a certain number of previous treatments. Standard therapies, on the other hand, can always be given regardless of prior clinical trial participation. At the Cleveland Clinic Brain Tumor and Neuro-Oncology Center, we have a number of clinical trials. For patients with glioblastoma, we have trials for newly diagnosed patients and for patients who have progressive or recurrent disease. For newly diagnosed patients, uh, we are testing a vaccine called CDX100 in conjunction with radiation and temozolomide. For patients with recurrent disease or, or progressive glioblastoma, we have clinical trials looking at a drug called MLN518 or the device Novo TTF100A. For other high-grade gliomas that are progressive or recurrent, there are two clinical trials at the moment, EM1421 or Calitra. For patients with brain metastases, there's a study of surgery plus gliadel wafer and two studies that test a drug called patupolone. We have studies in supportive care, one of which evaluates the reduction of stress in patients with malignant brain tumors, as well as their family caregivers. Finally, there's a study of dietary and herbal complementary and alternative medicine for patients with high-grade gliomas. There's more information about clinical trials at the Cleveland Clinic website, as well as the other websites listed on this slide. I'd like to repeat the take-home messages that we started with. Conventional and targeted chemotherapies are both important in the treatment of brain tumors. Most chemotherapy side effects are reversible or can be managed. Clinical trials offer new treatments that will hopefully improve the state of the art. On behalf of the Cleveland Clinic, Brain Tumor and Neuro-Oncology Center, I would like to thank you for taking your time to listen to this talk. Thank you.